you know, after I'd made my video on male uh, desire for unfreedom, I saw a lot of comments, relatively speaking, uh, cropping up questions regarding male mother need and how you overcome it. Well, how do you overcome male mother need? It's simple and yet it's complex because it's something that, that's biologically hardwired into us. Now, have I overcome male mother need? Absolutely. Does it still dwell within me? Well, yes, it does. Look at it in this sense, uh, somewhat akin to an, uh, someone with a genetic predilection towards alcoholism that doesn't engage in drink uh, and never does. You know, let's say he has a will of iron. Well, you know, he's overcome it, but is he, does he still have the potential to be an alcoholic? Does he still have essentially the genetic makeup of an alcoholic? Yeah, he does. It's just that he doesn't indulge in it. So let me say off the bat that uh, banishing male mother need is in my eyes an impossibility. It's not going to happen. Uh, barring some sort of neurological invention, you know, pills that, that <laughs> change the whole neurological landscape as well as the physiological, uh, that's not going to happen. So, yeah, it's something that we as men have to deal with quite clearly, male mother need. It's just something that's there and we need to deal with it. And it can be dealt with. But the key to overcoming male mother need is understanding it. Now, I realize that there are some subscribers of mine, as well as Bob Rouse's, who happen to be religious. And even though I, I certainly don't wear my atheism on my sleeve, uh, as I said many times in previous videos, I think it's it's just a, sort of a, a paltry, uh, uninteresting fact about my, my being. I also have no qualms about talking about my feelings towards religion in the right context. And in this context, it uh, serves a purpose. Now, look at male mother need in a similar light to religious delusion. You know, it's, I've never suffered from this problem. Uh, I've always been someone, and I think I've just, I'm just hardwired this way, to accept truth at face value, irrespective of how it makes me feel or the consequences. Uh, whether it makes me feel miserable or happy, none of this has ever mattered to me. I just accept truth. That's just the way I am. But some people struggle with that, and I think this is part of the same problem that people encounter uh, in recovering from religious delusion uh, is a similar problem that men uh, encounter in attempting to at least recover or overcome male mother need. Because the analogy isn't too far off. In, in, in the religious, say the monotheistic religious uh, worldview and many others, uh, you have this this universe inhabited by at least one being or several in this case of polytheism several beings that you know have some sort of concern for you and your life they're involved and detaching yourself and overcoming religious delusion involves you realizing that the universe is not there for you, you know, that it's that it is in, piteously utterly indifferent to you and you're part of the universe you are stardust as opposed to stardust, a lot of people confuse that. It really irritates me. You're a stardust, but so what? The universe itself is indifferent to you. Uh, when realizing there is no God or no plurality of gods, that uh, we we essentially essentially live in to to the best of our knowledge at the current as the current date of time an empty universe, uh, barring uh, life on Earth. Although that's highly unlikely. Totally different topic. That that is difficult for many people to swallow. We didn't evolve to entertain these grandiose thoughts about you know, the billions of stars out there or the, the multitudes of galaxies. And no, we evolved on the plains of Africa to recognize very simple things and understand very simple things. Well, here's a, another sort of off-base analogy. You see a snarling, large, rabid pit bull. Most of us, including myself, are going to uh, take a step back in, in, in fear because you don't want to be bitten, you don't want to be mauled. That's the environment we, we, we evolved in. We evolved in this environment to, to recognize danger uh, on a very sort of face-to-face -face basis. And, and dangers that are potentially more complex, like being lulled into religious delusion, which I've never had any affinity for, for whatever reason, I presume genetic reasons ultimately, that... Um, is a separate issue as well as male mother need because male mother need in contrast to religious delusion is something that at some point in time we all have suffered from and perhaps continue to like i said it, in the analogy with the alcoholic it's part of us and always will be how do you overcome it the same way you overcome religious delusion you use your mind 
uh, you need to be willing, and maybe some of you struggle more with that than others, to accept, just as the universe is indifferent, that there are certain biological realities at play. That, and I've talked about this many, many times, that the human female uh, views the human male principally as a vehicle of impregnation, insemination, and as a, pro as a provider, it means that he is a tool in her eyes. At best, the human female loves her genetic progeny. So she'll love your children if you have children with her. She'll love the children you have with her. But you are a tool. Now, and people don't love tools. We don't love tools. Tools can be incredibly useful. You might want to keep them around for uh, for a very long time. But there's no feeling of love involved in that. So there's nothing wrong in itself with having the male mother need feeling. The problem is, is that it's an impossibility uh, in getting it met. It's not, it's, it'll never be met because the human female doesn't perceive you uh, as, as anything but a tool in this context. You, you are a means to an end. Um, will, will, she, will maybe, possibly, will a human female accommodate the male mother need uh, in an effort to help facilitate uh, the utility, the uh, further facilitate the utility you provide her. Absolutely, it can happen. In fact, it has happened to me in the past. But once again, uh, the analogy is there. Uh, you know, religious people, for example, are consistently recorded as being uh, there's a data. There are data on, data on this as being happier than than atheists. Now, this has nothing to do with whether or not the content of religion is veridical or not. In fact, it's completely irrelevant in that. Um, you know, a crack addict, uh, you can be a happy drunk too. It doesn't mean that uh, the state of your drunken delusion is, an, is, is the most accurate perception of reality if you're looking uh, at the world through the eyes of being a complete sot. Uh, so, once again, uh, you... You can have this need temporarily met in uh, in illusionary, illusory and delusional manner, but I'm telling you that it's not legitimate because that's not how the woman views the man. You are a vehicle, a tool, a means to an end. And understanding that, that's the key. What you are to her, you can understand your need in relation to her. As I said, there's nothing wrong with having male mother need. We all have it to varying degrees. Just as there's no, just as there's nothing wrong with having a strong genetic inclination towards being an alcoholic. There's absolutely nothing wrong with that, really. The problem arises if you indulge, say, as, an, as a genetically inclined potential alcoholic in your in drink, in in alcoholic uh, consumption, that you might. That might have implications uh, on your life, negative consequences, just as indulging excessively or really to any extent in the male mother need will have similar consequences because it can get you into all kinds of pickles, uh, be it in the simple quote-unquote relationship arena or proper marriage uh, that where you have the state involved. And, all, and gods know how often we've talked about this, but as you know, you know that... That, that is where ultimately male mother need leads. Uh, man, I mean, I ultimately also believe that uh, the sex is a minimal part of it. I think the male mother need is just far, far stronger. And uh, it might be due, well, obviously it's due to biological wiring, but uh, I think it's, it's a confluence of factors, social factors. I mean, men, we don't receive a lot of attention. I said once many moons ago that as men we're there to be alone and in my most recent video I mean that that's what we do as men we're alone uh, we have no Borg consensus we have no sisterhood there is no such thing as a brotherhood unless unless we choose to uh, create individual kinship and brotherhood between individual males but there's not no such thing as an, as an automatic brotherhood amongst men and uh, I think this exacerbates this already present uh, male mother need in the in the human male. But just as your desire for uh, comfort and your desire for happiness or feeling good in an utterly piteously indifferent universe is not in of itself uh, illegitimate, uh, and your desire 
so choose your desire uh, as your male mother need not uh, illegitimate either it's just the dangers that are involved in attempting to sate that desire just as the alcohol potential alcoholic desires to sate his uh, his desire for alcoholism it's it's the consequences of indulging in that and it's very easy to, to overcome if you are wired such or have the ability to process the relationship between the man and the woman has been talked about many times that you are a vehicle a tool uh, maybe I'm a dictator maybe you're content simply uh, simply being that tool many men are that vehicle at, in exchange for uh, counterfeit uh, counterfeit uh, feelings of of male mother need being met but ultimately it's a question of, of acknowledging what what a delusion is this delusion is the delusion you project upon upon, upon the woman unto the woman the woman when you break down all the illusions and all the uh, the veils that that we as men have woven around her and it's been talked about many times uh, is a pretty simple creature she exists for the purposes of uh, procreation to extract resources from men and you are means towards that end you provide her with sperm and you provide her with uh, resources of varying kinds physical monetary etc etc in exchange she might be willing to temporarily say your male mother need but she's not there to do that just as the universe is not there to uh, make you happy the, the human female is not there to sate your male mother need and although you can seek it out in her it is ultimately a delusion just as when you uh, seek to attribute uh, some sort of anthropom anthropomorphous or uh, caring factor to an indifferent universe it's the same thing the woman does not exist the human woman does not exist to say your male mother need and in understanding that and truly grasping that I think uh, well therein lies the key to overcoming it it's pretty simple at the end of the day uh, it's just that aspect of willingness to accept what is true and or unwillingness to accept what is true there are some people who are who bizarrely enough are perfectly fine living uh, a, a deluded life uh, in a complete delusion um, people who are willing to deceive themselves and and and, and do it very easily uh, I suspect the majority of men uh, have have an inkling of what's going on even if they don't know the deep biological details but they'd rather partake of the delusion and they're religionists of, of similar men so ultimately it's going to be come down to uh, you as an individual and how you deal with this specific male mother need uh, but it make make no mistake it is a question of you having a, a pre-existing pre-existing condition that can be artificially met uh, just as like I said you can attribute all sorts of things to the universe that aren't there to make you feel good but the human female does not exist to sate your desire uh, for comfort uh, and does not exist to satisfy uh, your male mother need for me at least realizing that as someone who's never had an issue uh, accepting unpleasant truth for me at least that uh, that that kind of nails the coffin shut it's kind of a non-issue specifically once you realize all the things I've been talking about the entire enterprise is a foregone conclusion and in being a foregone conclusion you do with you do with this foregone conclusion what you do with all foregone conclusions you don't even dwell on it anymore I never think about things of that nature that is oh of only if because that would be a foregone conclusion and I don't bother with foregone conclusions anyway uh, hope that was a bit helpful uh, and yes the work on the major video <laughs> continues and scripting is ongoing uh, until then may the gods be with you take care